Hi everyone, welcome to this free tutorial on how to do big stitch quilt binding. This is hands down my favorite way to finish a quilt and I get so many questions and compliments on this stitching that I figured I should probably do a tutorial on it. So this tutorial assumes that your quilt is already quilted and your binding is attached to the front of the quilt. For me, I like to machine sew my two and a quarter inch binding onto the front of my quilt before I flip it over and hand sew onto the back. So let's dive right in by talking about the materials. First thing you're going to need is this pearl cotton embroidery thread from DMC. I like the size 8, but it does come in a finer size 12 and a thicker size 5. You're also going to need a pair of embroidery scissors and a handful of clips. Only 4 or 5 will do the trick. I like these Wonder Clips from Clover. Also, a thimble is a definite necessity for big stitch binding. I like this leather thimble from Clover. Also, a pair of needle pullers is helpful. I think these silicone fingertip grips do the trick. It just helps me give a little extra grip when I'm pulling the needle through. And last thing is a large embroidery needle. I like a size 3 or 5. Now, before I start stitching, the first thing I do is I fold a section of the binding over onto the back of the quilt and hold everything in place with a few clips. And I only work in about a foot or a foot and a half section at a time. I don't clip the entire quilt. As I'm stitching, I'll just move these clips down as I work along. Now let's talk about the knotting the thread. So you can see I have my needle threaded and I just start with a simple quilter's knot by wrapping the thread around the needle, pinching and pulling the needle and the thread all the way through to the end to tighten that knot. And I always clip the tail of this and leaving as little tail as possible. It just leaves less thread that I have to hide underneath the binding. The last thing I want to show you before we start stitching is how I use the thimble and the needle pullers. I like to have my thimble on my dominant hand on either my pointer or my middle finger and then I use these finger grips on my non-dominant hand so that I'm able to push the needle through with my right hand and pull it through with my left hand. You can just as easily have these all on your dominant hand and just push and pull the needle using one hand but I like to use both. Now, to get started, I first want to point out this row of machine stitching. And when you push the needle through from the front of the quilt to the back of the quilt, make sure that you're staying just outside that row of stitches. It's just going to help ensure that this first stitch is hidden well underneath the binding. I'm going to push that needle through, pull it all the way, and now you can see the knot is going to be well hidden underneath that binding once that gets folded over. So next we're going to fold that binding over and you want to make sure that you're folding that binding so it just covers that row of machine stitching. You want to make sure that's not in view when this is all finished and like have everything nice and hidden. So now we're going to push the needle through the binding just on the very edge of the binding and pulling that taut. So now the needle is on the top of the fabric and we'll be able to start doing our stitches to finish this quilt. And at this point, I like to add an extra clip just to the right of that first stitch to hold everything flat and secure. But once you have a row of stitches going, you won't need the clip on the right side of the stitching. You'll just have them to the left because I'm gonna be working from right to left along the edge of this quilt. So the stitch we're going to be using is called a running stitch and it's a technique where you're pushing the needle up and down through the fabric to create this stitch that looks separated or detached where there's a gap between each stitch. And I've I found that the key to a good big stitch binding is making sure that the length of your stitch and the gap between the stitches is consistent. I like mine to be about an eighth of an inch, maybe a little bit bigger or three to four millimeters. Um, you can do as big or as small as you want with these stitches, but that's how I do mine. And the key here, and what's really, really important when you're doing this stitch, is just to make sure that you're going through the binding and the backing and a little bit of the batting. You want to make sure that you're never going so deep with these stitches that you're going through all the way to the front of the quilt. So when I flip this over, you shouldn't be able to see any needle or thread on the quilt top. So you push that through, pull it with the other hand, and there we have our second stitch. 
So you can see how they are separated with this even gap. And you're just going to continue that all the way along, just stitching on the very edge of the binding, not the center of the binding, but the very edge. And one of the reasons I love to have a pair of embroidery scissors while I'm going is I like to clip these little threads as I'm stitching along. And these scissors are much smaller and much sharper than your regular sewing scissors. They're designed to get into these really tight little spaces and clip threads really close. The next thing I wanna talk about is how to transition when you are running out of thread and need to start a new string of thread. So what I do is I just finish the last stitch and then I push the needle through the binding only. So you're able to complete that last stitch and now I just grab a little bit of the backing pushing the needle through a small bit all the way through and pulling that tight to make sure I'm pulling that binding down well. And now to create a knot what I do is I do that a second time So now I've gone through the backing twice to create this loop. And now all you do is you push your needle through that loop and pull it tight to create a knot that's going to be tightly underneath that binding and hidden out of view. You can see that knot right on the surface of the backing. And now you can clip that and start a new thread just like you did when you initially started your stitching. So you're going to fold that binding back and you're going to push that needle through all three layers of that quilt sandwich from the front to the backing, making sure you're staying just outside of that row of machine stitching again, pulling it all the way through so we have this knot that is going to be on the front side of the quilt hidden underneath the fold of that binding. And now you can continue on just like we did previously by pushing the needle through that edge of the binding so you're back on the top side of the fabric and then you can just continue on with the rest of your stitches. So next, let's talk about how we do corners. So I'd like to do just a nice mitered corner by continu continuing that fold to the point of the quilt and folding the other side over to create this 45 degree fold in the binding that comes together at a nice point. And I just put a clip on the corner to hold that all into place. Now, the stitch I like to do at the corner here is I like to create this cute little X in the corner. And I do that by just continuing that row of stitching all the way to cross that fold. And then I go underneath the fabric and do a second stitch that's perpendicular to that first one and in line with the row of stitches. So you can see how the stitches that create the X are still in line with the other row of stitching. Now the important thing here is you're going to have to time these stitches. You may have to make them a little longer or a little bit shorter to make sure that you land at the right point to do that stitch at the corner. So you come up with your last stitch right in front of that fold that you've created. And again, just continuing, you want to make sure that you're staying in line with the previous row. Going down and you're going to come across the fold at about 45 degrees. Coming back underneath the fabric. So you can see how you're going through the fold and capturing both sides of the binding. And for this, I have to work kind of left-handed for a moment. So I switch the thimble so I can push it through and pull it back through with my right hand. And you can see how that stitch stays in line with the row of stitching to the right. And I switch the thimble back to the other side so I can continue stitching as a right-hander. So now we have that stitching 
and we have to do our second stitch to create that X and you want it to be perpendicular to that first stitch. And you wanna make sure you're going, pushing the needle down through the edge of the binding just like you did previously. Pulling that through and now you can see that we have this X at the corner that one holds everything very secure but it's kind of a nice little decorative touch at the corner of the quilt. And there's other variations to this but this is definitely my favorite. And then you just continue on stitching until you get all the way around the quilt. And there you have it. Big Stitch Binding. Enjoy! Mm -hmm.